product. There's another term for you, reactants. We have come across it before. Mm -hmm. But these two molecules are the reactants, and they will react when a successful collision takes place. Yeah. Now, we need to go further and talk about what factors, what macroscopic factors are going to make for successful collisions or effective collisions. Mm -hmm. And what we're really getting at here is what factors are going to promote reactions, going to make them go faster, increase the rate of chemical reactions. Mm -hmm. Now, what kinds of factors? Let's, let's try and think in terms of this mental picture that we've got and mm -hmm. try and think about some of the factors that could be influential in increasing reaction rates. Right. Now, the factors here would be things like, for example, um, the temperature of the molecules. Okay. What, what difference is that making? And if, if we have uh, um, higher temperature, molecules in a higher temperature, collisions, we've got more collisions at that okay. level, and the yeah. likelihood of them colliding at the right orientation is huge. Okay. So that can actually speed up that chemical reaction. It's an interesting point. You've used another mm. word there, likelihood. Yes. We're talking about statistics here. Mm. We're talking about probabilities. Mm. Now think about chance. Think about probabilities. Mm. If you've got two molecules moving around really fast, they're probably going to bump into each other several times before mm. they have a successful collision. But the fact that they're moving around fast means that there is a much greater chance mm. of a successful collision take, taking place. So Tanika uses the word likelihood. I'm introducing mm. this statistical term chance or mm. probability. But mm. that's what we're talking about. How likely is a, an effective collision to take place? And another thing to take into consideration here is the fact that temperature is related to the kinetic energy ah, possessed by the molecules. How fast they move. So the, the, the more kinetic energy the molecules have, the higher the chances of them colliding. Okay effectively to result in a product. What else is going to increase the likelihood? Things like, for example, the surface area, if we're talking about okay. solids. If, if in our case here with these two molecules where we, we can see they are solids. Um, it, it, if, 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 this, if we regard this as just one particle of a molecule, one lump kind of a particle, it's big, that the likelihood of them colliding or in fact that the sides available for these molecules to collide that is only those that are on the circumference of this secular okay. molecule but if we were to grind this into powder okay then it'll break it then it'll the, the, the provide more place more for place for the interactions between this molecule and that molecule let's take a look at that all right here we've got a solid mm. and certain pieces of the solid uh, molecules have escaped into, let's say, this is a liquid here, mm -hmm. and the greens are in a, in a liquid state or are in solution. Now, the only place that we can have a collision is along that surface of the mm. solid. But what happens if this breaks up? The solid mm. breaks up. Then there's more space okay. for the other molecule to interact with the molecules of the solid. Greater likelihood again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me uh, add something else. Take a look at this picture again, and let's consider the, uh, the situation where we don't have as many pinks as we had greens. Mm. Now, what is the chance of a successful collision? Well, the chance is pretty good for these pinks mm. because they're, in a, they're in, uh, outnumbered by the greens. But the fact is that uh, if we then reduce the number of greens as well, uh, down to say four of these, or three of these, and we have them in the same size container, you see they're very much further apart. And there's a reduced likelihood, again, of a reaction mm. taking place. Mm. And this would correspond to concentration. Mm. So in other words, if you've got fewer of the molecules in whatever container the reaction is taking place in. Mm. The same kind of idea, I guess, if we were talking about gases. Yeah, and we bring in pressure. The idea of pressure. Mm. You see, we've got a container here. Mm. Imagine these are now gas 
molecules. And in that container, we've only got a few of them. That mm. would be a low pressure situation. Mm. But now let's increase the number of particles. And you can see the number of particles per unit volume mm. is increasing. And that corresponds to an increase in pressure. So mm. increase in pressure is also going to be one of those factors that will uh, affect the likelihood of successful effective, effective collisions. collisions. Let's have a look at those, uh, those points. Right. So here we have just listed all these factors that we're talking about that affect the rate at which a chemical reaction occurs. One, the nature of reacting substances. And here we're talking about whether the reacting substances, substances are liquids or solids or mm. gases. Or if they, if they if are or, uh, likely like to react. I exactly. If they are really uh, substances that are ready to react. Yeah. yeah. And the second one, surface area, we'll that we demonstrated that quite well here. The next one, catalyst. Ah, what do we mean? Now, by? what is this? This is a substance that actually do not take part in the chemical reaction, but speeds up a r the rate of a chemical reaction. By, by us saying that it doesn't take part in the reaction is the fact that you start with the same type of a substance as a catalyst, and you still end up with that substance. Yeah. The same amount of the, the substance you started with. So all it does is just to speed up the rate of reaction. Tanika, I know that the formal definition is, about, is of a catalyst is something Mm. that doesn't take part in a reaction. I, mm. I know that that is said sometimes, but mm. I think we should be very careful because in a way, the catalyst does take part. Mm. It, it plays a part in the reaction. But it doesn't get consumed in it the reaction. It doesn't get consumed. Yeah, it perhaps that is the more the, the correct point that way you of, made of, of putting it, yes. Yeah, yeah. You, well, yeah. How mu however much catalyst you start with, you mm. end with that amount as well. Yeah. Mm. But it might have had a role in, in the, the reaction, in the process of uh, the chemical and, and that role might, for instance, to be uh, to take one of these atoms. Let's just take a look at this. Here is a catalyst, mm. and what this catalyst does is it likes to bond pinks to its surface. Mm. Now, if these things are all moving around really fast, what the catalyst might do is hold these pinks still in the right orientation sure. so that a green can mm. come and react with it. And that is the very kind of reaction mm. that happens in catalytic converters in exhaust pipes where we use a platinum compound. And what the platinum compound does is it holds the exhaust uh, fumes on the surface of that catalyst mm. long enough for other gases like oxygen to react with them mm. and break them down. Uh, what they can also do, of course, is just hold noxious gases on the surface permanently, mm. which means that every now and again you would have to, to change, your, to exhaust change your exhaust catalyst. Yeah. Okay. Now, and the next one, concentration. And that as well, we, s we demonstrated making use of the green and pink molecules here. Let's do a better one. All right. Let's and do a better demonstration. Thank <laughs> you.